Okay, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Friday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. In Orthopedic, go to Brock. They're the best. Of course, if you got a roof issue, you give us a shout. 364-1007. 364-1007. Uh, coming soon. Announcement about our newly branded company coming very soon. Excited about that. But we are fully operational. Uh, license, same group, you know, Terrio, Tilly, uh, Joe Morales, me, all of us. Uh, so if you got a roof issue from the weather, let us help. 364-1007. All right, y'all. LSU at Tennessee this weekend. Uh, Tigers and the Vols, three-game series. As LSU tries to get right, man, uh, they desperately need it. And um, not a, a super enviable place to try to go get right when you're uh, – you're going to be at Tennessee. Really good program. Uh, the best offense in the SEC this year yeah, is Tennessee. So, you know, a team that's collectively hitting 338 with uh, 94 doubles, 89 homers. A big part of that, of course, is uh, they play at a softball field. So, uh, 320 down the lines. I think it's like 390 to straightaway center. I mean, it's a high school field. So, um, because you play on such a small field, uh, the ball leaves the yard easily at Lindsey Nelson, and um, it's embarrassing how small that field is. But you get to play on the same field this weekend, and you got power hitters, and you need to elevate the baseball, and you need to hit homers this weekend against their pitching staff. So make good contact, um, get them on, get them over, get them in, or just a bloop and a blast, and go score because you're going to need it this weekend against Tennessee because they're they're going to score. Um, uh, Jay Johnson flipping the rotation a little bit. Gage Jump is going to go game one. Luke Holman game two. Little TBA game three. Interesting thing is that Tennessee is kind of shaking up their rotation as well. Uh, they're going TBA game one. They'll keep Drew Beam in his spot on game two. Uh, and then there goes Andrew Z uh, Seacrest on, um, in game three. So, you know, you got a real shot. Um, yeah, I think what, what you're seeing Jay do here is a little bit of a, a switch from, you know, what you saw against um, against Arkansas when he pitched off, and his thought was, okay, what's my best opportunity to get? It's sort of like concede game one, right? You know, you're not going to beat Hagen Smith, so don't burn Luke Holman. Save Luke Holman for game two. Try to get that game, and if you do, see what happens in game three. That was the approach against Arkansas. This is different because in moving Holman to game two. You're not giving yourself the best chance to win game one. You're trying to give yourself the best chance to win this series because Holman against Beam is your best opportunity to beat Beam. And so Jay's thinking, all right, put jump on Friday against TBA and see if you can get this one. Give yourself the best opportunity to win game two against Beam, and then you see what happens in game three when you're TBA against uh, Seacrest. But um, if Jay's no longer thinking, how do I win a game? It's I got to win this series. And so you leverage yourself and you leave yourself a little vulnerable, right? I mean, you can't sweep if you don't win game one. And the best opportunity to win game one would be with Holman on the mound. But I mean, so you want to contrast, all right, from what Jay's done in the past? Here you go. Last year against Tulane in the regional, he threw Paul Skeens against Tulane in the regional when nobody in their right mind would throw Paul Skeens against Tulane in the regional. You save Paul Skeens for the Marvel game. But Jay did that to get game one. Uh, to leave nothing to chance. Well, he's. It just goes to show you. This is a. Um, it's a mindset change. Like you have to have urgency. Now at three and nine, you you have to approach weekends with some urgency, and it's going to leave you leverage. The other thing I think we're going to see this weekend is I do think we're that I think Tuesday was a pretty good indicator. Jay is is probably at the end of his rope, trying to wait for some of these veteran players to step up and lead. Um, I think you're going to see young guys this weekend. I, I think Braswell's going to the bench tonight. I think you'll probably see, probably see Milam at short, although you could see Kucherak. Um, if Milam goes to short, I think that means you see Pearson at second. You're going to, which opens up the spot obviously for Larson in the outfield. And Larson's played played well, and you can tell Jay Jay really likes him, and he's going to play. So um, I think Malazzo is going to catch. Uh, you don't want Travinsky behind the plate. You could DH Travinsky, but again, Travinsky has seen his batting average drop 50 points. You know, and it's 
you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, for Hayden, I think you look and you say, okay, well, um, you know, is this a, a situation where you have a guy that just got really hot uh, at the beginning of the season, but, you know, for his career, I know everybody, everybody loves him. He's a team guy and he's in his fifth year, but, you know, as a freshman, he had 059, then he had 271, then 242. Last year, he got hot late in the season, popped and went 356, and he was hitting about 350, and his average has dropped almost 60 points now. He's at 298. So, you know, is, um, and he's already got more strikeouts this year than he had last year. He's got 33 strikeouts this year in 114 at bats. Last year he had 25 strikeouts and 104. So 10 more at bats. He's already got eight more strikeouts than last year. So um, you know, what do you do with Travinsky? I'm sure you're gonna keep running him out there, but you know, it's not like you can justify catching him three games. Um, so anyway. We'll see what they do, but I think you're going to have a shakeup. Uh, mark my words. I think you're going to have a big shakeup in the lineup tonight. I think Tuesday was a good indicator. Okay, uh, let's say some good mornings. Pels get a win last night as well. Awesome. So uh, Pels now a full game ahead of Phoenix in the uh, uh, for the six seed to be in the play to be in the playoff and you know avoiding the play in one thirty five one twenty three. I told you on AFR yesterday, wrong team was favored. Uh, Pels. Played Sacramento five times this year, beat them all five times, and kind of walloped them too. So a really nice win for New Orleans yesterday. Two to play. They'll play Golden State on the road, and then they're home against the Lakers to wrap up the regular season. So, um, you know, let's let's see how it goes for New Orleans. Um, you know, you got Golden State tonight, second second of a back to back. So this is an unenviable spot having to go play on the road at Golden State is playing really well, second of a back-to-back. -back. But uh, then you come home on Sunday against the Lakers for the regular season finale. And by then, who knows what the Lakers will be playing for. They might be resting everybody. You know, The rotation might be set, and you win that game to, to solidify the sixth seed. So, Okay, um, let's say some good mornings. Charlie Cavell, Brian Wynn, Kelly Gross, Jason Horn, good morning. Uh, kicks of the day. I have uh, some... Um, some pink dunks that I'm going to be wearing that kind of match the shirt, Jason, but they're in the other room right now. Uh, Wendell Norman, uh, a new match shuffle on the way. J oh, you better believe it, Jason. There will absolutely, I will be um, absolutely uh, enlisting the help of one Mr. Toby Tomplay for a new uh, a new jingle for the uh, the new company that's being formed. Um, and uh, I'll look forward to. To helping with that or to having y'all help with that and uh, enjoy the match shuffle tiger diver what happens if the pels split the next two games well then it depends what happens with phoenix because phoenix has the tiebreaker over new orleans and uh, phoenix with two to play you kind of need you'll need phoenix to lose one now phoenix has um uh, they're at sacramento tonight and then sunday they're at minnesota so remember minnesota could very well be um uh, playing that last game for the one seed. Because right now, Denver has a one-game lead on Minnesota, again, with two to play. So um, kind of depends what you know what teams are going to be playing for. But really, what you'd love, listen, if if the Pels win the next two, they obviously lock up the, the six seed. If the Pels split the next two and Phoenix splits the next two, the Pels have it. If the Pels lose the next two and Phoenix wins the next two, then Phoenix is your um uh then Phoenix will be the six seed, the Pels will be in the play in against um against Sacramento. A team that they have dominated. Eric Water out of Morton Matson Tolman probably demands the least bullpen usage. Sticking him in the middle of the rotation probably lets Jay get a little more aggressive with the bullpen Friday thoughts. Um, I don't think that's the reason. Um, yeah, and I think the reason is Holman gives you the best opportunity to beat Drew Beam. Um, and Jay's trying to win, he's trying to sweep. He's trying to give himself the best chance to win every game, not win a game like when you're at Arkansas, when you're trying to just concede against Holman or against um 
um, Hagen Smith. Um, you know, I, I will be interested. Like, here's the thing. That's So here's, like, the good thing about tonight, uh, Eric. Like, think of it this way. If you do have, let's say you do have a lead when jump exits, you're going to get Griffin Herring. You're not saving him to pair him with, uh, with Holman in game two. You're trying to win this game no matter what tonight. So that'll be the interesting telltale. Now, what if you're, what if jump exits and you're losing? Well, you're not bringing Griffin Herring in without a lead. Michael Cook, what's going on? Jerry DeLucky, good morning. Good to see you, man. Bubba Tate, morning, Sconers. Uh, Masters is on already. Baseball all weekend. One of the best weekends of the year. And the end of the NBA regular season. Brandon Ray, what's going on? Uh, Bill Caffey, good morning. Fingers crossed for an LSU series win. It's overdue, Bill. I mean, the law of averages eventually are going to work in uh, in LSU's favor. Uh, <laughs> huge sports weekend ahead. Uh, Deborah Cowart, good morning. Uh, Abner Neal, Ethan Davidson, morning. From what I heard, Musso from Musso, he didn't say anything about it. But it sounds like we're going to get a ten run ruled all weekend. Um, well, I didn't hear what Musso said, but it, Tennessee is the best offense in the league. LSU's pitching staff has not pitched well. That ballpark is essentially a softball field, and it's a launch pad. So. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to feel super optimistic, X, uh, unless it look. Here's the here's the flip side of it: Tennessee's pitching staff hasn't been awesome. So, and now look, LSU's offense has not been awesome, but you do elevate the baseball and hit homers, and that is a ballpark that is certainly conducive for hitting homers. Um, you know, I am, you know, hopeful here um that LSU goes out tonight where Tennessee tries to mix and match this the, you know it's pitching tonight and LSU hits the ball well and and gets game one and then you have Luke Holman going in game two I think that's your best case scenario uh Brent St. Germain Sean Comiskey good morning I like the pitching shuffle LSU has a better chance of winning game two or three with Holman pitching bats are more alive in the early games um <clears throat> You see, you don't have a better chance of winning game two with Holman because you're going against Drew Beam. Like, your best chance of getting a game would be Holman, your best, against TBA tonight. That would be your best chance of getting a game. Um, now, obviously, if you don't have... So, again, keep in mind, they're pitching off tonight. Or I shouldn't say pitching off. They're just... They're going TBA. Um, they're... Uh, keeping Beam and Seacrest in their, on their regular day. So, you know, they're just going TBA today to see what ultimately they do. Um, so I, I don't love it, uh, actually. Um, I would keep Holman tonight because it would give you the best chance of winning tonight, and you've got you got to go win a game. you got to win tonight. Like, you have to, you have to have the mindset every time. You're like, you have to go win. It's not going to the weekend thinking, oh, let's get a game or see if we can win the weekend. Like, you have to go in with the mindset of every game. Like, we've got to win this game today. Um, that's just the spot that LSU's left themselves in. Cliff Nelson, good morning. Mike Hardy all morning from Jersey. Question about LSU defense. What made LSU a dominant defensive unit a decade ago and why the recent struggles the last six years? Yeah. Um, well, part of it has been bad hires a defensive coordinator. That goes without saying. Um, you know, you lost Dave Aranda after 2019. Bo Pelini was a disaster. Uh, then you brought in Durante. Um, then Matt House, uh, like you haven't you haven't hired well there. That's obvious. Number two, um, recruiting on the defensive side of the ball has very clearly taken a step back. I mean, I'll say it again. Name me one guy in LSU secondary last year who looked like an NFL draft pick. That's LSU, where it, I mean, you used to have first round picks sitting on the bench. So, I mean, it's. It's coaching and talent. But hopefully, they're getting that fixed. Jeff McKinley, good morning. Uh, Two-day member guest at Beauchan. Okay. Very good. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, Quentin Brakebill, what's going on? Happy Friday from 318. All right, y'all. Bubba Smith, good morning. Y'all do me a favor. Please smash that like button if you would. Subscribe up to the channel if you're new. Facebook, like the Matt Moscone page. Share the post. Moving a little quickly here. Um, we got a little bit of a late start. Uh, Drew is, is awake. He... Um, 
let's say uh <clears throat> let's say his uh tummy his tummy woke him up you know what i mean Jeremy Brinkmeyer, next season, I know you've said LSU offense is going to use the screen a lot more, but with new offensive coordinator, are the only ba- are they only basically going to use the inside zone like in the past? I don't know. Um, I think I don't think you're going to see power with this team, so I do think you're going to see a lot of inside zone. But I think LSU is equipped to block it, and I'm excited to see the way that this team runs the ball. Uh, Trivia Carter, good morning. Ron Ritchie, good morning. By the way, the reason I think uh, Corey Chapman, good morning, go Tigers. I think the reason that they're going to use the screen a lot more is the point being Jaden ran the ball 135 times last year. And how many of those were uh, were scramble plays, right, as opposed to design runs? Let's let's say half. So roughly 70, 65, 70 offensive snaps – are not going to be your quarterback tucking it and run. So what does Nussmeyer do? Does he check down? Do they set up screens? Does he throw it away? I think that's why that's where you're going to see sort of the disparity in the offense this year. Uh, Ethan Davidson, Tennessee is a better hitting coach in LSU two out of three years. They have been beater. I get that they have a small field, but they have a freshman who's hitting better than our sophomore players. Ethan, because they play in a matchbox field. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, and I, I fundamentally disagree with you when you say Tennessee is a better hitting coach because Jay Johnson is LSU's hitting coach, and I would argue he's the best hitting coach and best offensive coach in college baseball. So I fundamentally disagree with you there. Um, prods up ninety six. What's good, Jim Arsenault, Damon Gilmore, Antron Hemingway? What's up? Good morning. Uh, spring game is at one o'clock on Saturday. I'll be there in that number. Look forward and looking forward to it. Uh, Noah Lejeune, Tennessee hates us, especially after the last season. Their offense is explosive. It's in Nashville. It's not in Nashville. It's in Knoxville, as a matter of fact. Um, Mike Hardy, all surprised. Brian Kelly said they're only going after interior D line with the best O line in football and a risky QB. Why not lean on the running game? Um, are you talking about adding another running back? I look. I think if there's a must take. Um, okay, but you have Josh Williams, who's a six year player. You have Caleb Jackson, everybody's fired up about. Caden Durham is a highly rated dude coming in, and Trey Holly is likely to be eligible. So I'm good with those four, provided you have those four. So, <clears throat> okay, it's 8 01. I got to go. Apology that we got a little bit of a late start today, but again, as I mentioned, daddy duty and uh, dad, it's actually Drew duty, if you know what I mean. Duty. Anyway, um, okay, y'all have an awesome day. As always, shout out to Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Uh, if you need orthopedics, go to Brock. And um, they do have their uh, their event coming up, uh, uh, free physicals for you know, getting your uh, your young athlete game day ready. Go to brortho.com, brortho.com to learn more. I think the info is probably there. Uh, game day prep, there it is. If you go to the foundation drop down. Um, at brortho.com, you'll see it. It's Saturday, May the 11th. So you still got a little time. We'll tell you more as we get closer, but it's 7 a.m. to noon. It's free physicals for all athletes, for student athletes. Okay, y'all have an awesome day. We'll see you. Peace.